Good morning. Welcome to worship here at North Little Rock First United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Annie Lankford. Welcome to those who are here in person and those online. We are so glad that y'all have joined us. Now, in case you were wondering, Pastor Lynn is at home. She had um, a member of her immediate family test positive for COVID. Everyone is fever free, symptom free, and doing great, which is yay. We're all so excited about that. But they are all quarantining so that they will not even risk spreading right now. So she looks forward to being back with us next Sunday. For our visitors, welcome. For everyone else, welcome. There is a QR code in your bulletin. And if you look at that, that little QR code there on, on the screens, if you take a picture of that with your camera, you will be sent to our link tree where you can fill out our connect card. Whether you are a visitor or you are a longtime member, please sign in. Give us your prayer requests. We look at those every Monday during staff, and we would love to know that you are here, that you are worshiping with us, and, um, and any needs that you may have. I do have a few announcements. The first is that this Wednesday, Donna Drury will be leading us in a Kiss the Ground viewing and discussion. This is a movie that is narrated by Woody Harrelson, and it is about how we as a church and as a community can continue our conversation caring for our world creation care and all that God has entrusted to us. It is an appropriate film and discussion for all ages. So whether you are in, um, in first kids, whether you are in youth, whether you are a grown-up, we want all of you to come and be a part of this discussion. So that begins at six o'clock. It is not in the kids movie theater. We moved it to the youth pod so that we can spread out a little more and socially distance. So join us in the youth pod this Wednesday at six o'clock. Also, in your bulletin, you, um, I hope you have noticed this fabulous booklet of all adult discipleship offerings coming up this fall and winter. Um, we would love for you to join us for some of them, for all of them. But our Wednesday nights begin again. We are so excited on, um, on the 18th, a week from this Wednesday, beginning at 6 o'clock with communion, and then our studies begin at 6.30. So be sure to look through this and sign up for what, um, what you would like to participate in. We look forward to welcoming everyone back on Wednesday evenings. Also, uh, next Sunday, the 15th, is our district youth travelers game. We are joining with the rest of the youth in the central district and headed to the ballpark. You know that I love baseball and um, so I'm going and I hope that you want to go too. Our youth will have a great time. I know Pastor Kathy has extra tickets if you haven't signed up yet. So we, we look forward to the fun uh, with our youth on, next Sunday at two o'clock as well. And now, as we enter this time of worship, will you pray with me? God, as we enter this sacred time, prepare our hearts and our minds to praise you, to worship you, and let the Holy Spirit enter us, that we may hear your will for each of us through each part of this service. Amen. Good morning. Would you stand and join me in the uh, call to worship? Thank you. Threads of a tapestry differ in shade and color, all woven into a pattern. Each of us are uniquely created by God, gathered with one heart. The body of Christ is one faith, one baptism, one hope. And fortunately, the family of God is filled with forgiveness a lot of times. 
So let me try this again. God has bound us together with ties stronger than cord or family. The Spirit of God's grace weaves through our lives. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let us sing of this unity in God through Jesus Christ as we sing together hymn number 548 in Christ there is no east or west. <laughs> continue as we affirm our faith we're going to change it up a little bit this morning you'll find the affirmation on the screens or on page 888 in your hymnal this comes from 1 Corinthians 15 and Colossians 1 this is the good news which we received in which we stand and by which we are saved Christ died for our sins was buried was raised on the third day and appeared first to the women then to Peter and the twelve and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross, reconciles all things to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. So this morning, I have two things. First, I want to say thank you to everyone who helped support our um, COVID-19 vaccination clinic that happened yesterday. We had several people who came out and volunteered, lots of people who shared on public media, public media, 
all the ways, you know, the internet, that thing that we all use now and it's public and out there. Thank you all for that. We really appreciated it. We were able to service 19 different people with vaccinations, most of whom were younger people who are now, um, what's right? now able to take the COVID vaccine. Um, we're hoping to have an even greater turnout this next time on the 28th when people can come back for their second dose or for a first dose. So again, thank you for that. All of your help counts. Now, for the point that I'm here for, the children's message. So for all of you who are joining us at home or any children or young people at heart, listen up. This is a plant, very good. Now, plants are super special. You know why? Because they are like their own source of energy. They have leaves and the leaves soak up the sun. They turn that into chlorophyll, which is like the food for the plant. It goes all down throughout the plant. It makes it nice and green and lush. If it's a plant like this, it's seen better days because it sits in the window in our office and Michelle and I occasionally remember to water it. However, without water, without sun, how well will this plant thrive? Not very well. And if I cut off the leaves, even worse, right? The roots, they suck up the water out of the earth, we hope, and that sends all that life-giving water to the plant to help make it work. But without the roots, this plant's kind of a dud, and it looks pretty pitiful. And if it doesn't have any water, like sometimes happens, it looks really rough. That brings me to our verse for today, which is coming to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And you guys are going to get to see my amazing skills or not. I don't get the fancy microphones that are attached to your face. Sorry. My fingers don't want to turn pages. But here's what this has to do with the plant. This is our passage from Paul where he's talking to the Corinthians about the body of Christ and how each part of that body is super important. And I think this is a great way to share that with us and kind of open our minds and eyes how important that is. It says the church is like a human body. One body has many different parts, but it's still one body. We are many different kinds of people, but we're still one body of believers. If a foot said, because I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, that would be silly. It would still be a part of the body. And if the whole body was an eye, how could it hear or smell? <laughs> That's pretty silly too. God made our bodies to have lots of parts, and each part has something special to do. God made all of our parts to work together. The body of believers is exactly the same. God has given each of you a special thing to do. Some of you travel to share the good news about Jesus, and some of you teach right where you live. Some of you heal the sick or become church leaders. Is everyone a teacher? Is everyone a leader? No, that would be silly too. God made us to be different and to do different things to show our love for Jesus, just like the different parts of one body. We all have different talents, and we all work together. God has made each of us very special. So this week, whether you're a root or a pinky toe, find a way to share God's love and support this body of Christ. Have a great week, everyone. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we praise and adore you for empowering us to claim membership of the body of Christ, a gift received through the fullness of your grace. Empower us anew, we pray, with tongues of fire and hearts of love to proclaim the reconciling word among people. Remind us that we are all members of the one body, and if one member suffers, we all suffer. God, forgive us any pridefulness in our hearts. We know that any gift we possess has come from you. 
Forgive us also for any thought we have had that someone else does not belong. Teach us to foster a holy respect for every person in the body of Christ. May we, as the body of Christ in this place, be the best evidence of your love through our actions. We give thanks that all of us are Christ's body, and we rejoice in each one being a part of it, accept our adoration and our praise. We pray all of this as your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue as we sing one of the great and familiar hymns of our faith. Hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Ah. Uh -huh. 
And now I invite you to stand for our scripture reading as you are able this morning, hearing these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 21. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an ear, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And this, my friends, is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why. that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us together in love. There is only one God is only one key. There is only one body that is why we sing. Sing this chorus for me, will you? Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us together in love. Bind us together in love. Amen. Thank you, John. Please pray with me. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. All right, I have a question for you. You ready? Are you ready? Okay, good. I was afraid you all fallen asleep already. All right, what does a space adventurer, a gun-toting raccoon, a tree, an assassin, and a thug have in common? I can't hear. I heard something. Gar it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. What else? Pretty much nothing. Right? Yeah, pretty much nothing. Well, that is, until the entire galaxy threatens to be destroyed, and then they kind of decide that maybe they have to work together. Isn't it interesting how we, too, seem to sometimes have nothing in common until something threatens our very existence? And even then, sometimes, not even then. But today, we are finishing up our sermon series on the faith, of, faith in film. And many of us, last Wednesday night, gathered safely in the youth pod to watch Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a 2014 film, the first in the series of Guardians of the Galaxy. And if you haven't seen it, here's a very, very short recap. Peter Quill, who would actually rather be known as Star-Lord, is kidnapped by aliens from his home on Earth in 1988, which is the reason why the soundtrack is so fabulous. Now, a space adventurer he has become, and he steals an orb that is wanted by the evil Ronin. Now, in order to evade Ronin, Peter Quill must make an unlikely truce with some questionable characters. Namely, that raccoon, tree, assassin, and thug that I mentioned earlier. Upon realizing what a cosmic threat this orb possesses, Peter Quill rallies this ragtag group, and they ultimately save the universe. That's it. And I'm pretty sure that if you still want to see the movie, I have not spoiled anything. So, here's the second question. What do a nomadic church planter, rich pagan men, leather workers, tradespeople, people who live on the street, what do they all have in common? Nope, nope, not absolutely nothing. This was a trick question. No. These people, they all have something pretty big in common. All of these people believe in Jesus Christ. The Jesus who died on the cross for their sins and who rose from the dead to give them everlasting life. Who are these people, you ask? Well, it's Paul and the people of Corinth, of course. Paul was actually the first church planter. And now you have something for your trivia nights. He would travel from city to city, converting both pagans and Jews to the way, which was a new religion of Jesus Christ. Now, Corinth during the time of Paul, was a bustling and a prosperous city. It was located on the isthmus that divided the northern and the southern parts of modern-day Greece. Now, this meant that it was a major center of both trade and communication. It had two major ports within walking distance of each other. This was much like 
the cosmopolitan city of Xandar in Guardians of the Galaxy. The church in Corinth that Paul had started was not made up of some group of people that all looked the same and acted the same. As I mentioned earlier, these were all people who believed in and followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. And they were from all walks of life. And in ancient times, mm -mm, this was not done. So, as you might expect, there were a lot of disagreements about how the church should run, a lot of disagreements about how the church members should behave. Kind of sounds similar to these days, doesn't it? But we have Paul's letters. First and second Corinthians are the letters that Paul wrote to the people of Corinth in response to the very specific issues that they were going through during that time of forming the church. One of the issues that Paul addressed was the competition between church members. You see, the people of Corinth were used to a certain set of social norms, and those social norms were set by the culture of their time. These norms were different from what Paul expected of them and what Jesus expected of them. They were competing with each other based on social status. They were using their talents and their gifts, which were supposed to be meant for good, to hoard and try and one-up each other. I believe that it is always important to understand the context first of whatever scripture we are discussing. We need to understand when these biblical authors lived and what was expected of them in their time. And sometimes we discover that humans have been humans since the beginning of time. Even today, we tend to self-select well, who we worship beside. We tend to worship with people who look like us, who people, with people who act like us, and with people who believe exactly the same thing that we do. And when our comfort gets threatened by different beliefs or by people who might not look or act like us, we tend to rebel. We threaten to leave the church, or we cause major disruptions, or we might bully, or we might use our tongue to lash out in hate. This is exactly what the members of the church in Corinth were doing. The wealthiest of these members were exalting themselves over the week, and they were causing real problems. So they wrote to Paul, and they asked him what they were supposed to do. And Paul probably surprised them when he wrote back and he did not condone their behavior. Sure, it's much easier to gather with people who are just like us than to reach across the divide. But is that really what God is calling us to do? Is that really what Jesus taught? No, not at all. Diversity in all of its incarnations is not something to be avoided or solved or managed. Diversity is a gift of God's grace. Diversity is a sign of the Holy Spirit at work. The guardians of the galaxy were diverse, were they not? Actually, I think when I'm thinking back on that, that actually might be an understatement. They, they were, yeah, they were very different. And when that movie begins, they hated each other. Oh my goodness, did they hate each other. They didn't agree on anything. But they all wanted this orb, every single one of them. 
and so they begrudgingly work together. And then they lose the orb to the evil Ronin. He gets it. Why? Because they were begrudgingly working together, which means that they probably weren't working together very well. And then they realize that they are about to lose the entire universe. Like, they will cease to exist. And Peter Quill realizes that they may all have more in common than he first thought. He says, I look around at all of us, and you know what I see? Losers. I mean, like folks who have lost stuff. And we have, man, we have, all of us, our homes, our families, normal lives. And you think life takes more than it gives. But not today. Today it's giving us something. It's giving us a chance. A chance to care. It's true what Peter Quill said, isn't it? We are all losers. Every single one of us. And we have lost so much during this pandemic, haven't we? Sometimes it feels like we're never going to recover. We've lost loved ones. We've lost jobs. We've lost community. We've lost human touch. But there are also things that we've lost during this pandemic that I hope we never get back. And one of those, for me, is that we've lost the privilege of caring only for ourselves. If this pandemic has taught us anything, I hope it has taught us that we are all in this together. My decisions affect you and your decisions affect me. I don't have the luxury of being selfish anymore. Gosh darn it. I wear a mask because it says I love you. Not because it's comfortable or it's a new fashion statement. Well, actually, I do try to make a fashion statement with it. We have to do things to make life fun, don't we? I want this pandemic to end just as much as everyone else. I get vaccinated not only because it helps me, but because it protects you too. I have committed to lose a little bit of my freedom because I want to make sure that this pandemic ends. And that's exactly what Peter Quill realizes. And then, so too does that entire band of misfits. And suddenly, when they're not secretly hating each other, they become stronger. They become stronger than they have ever ever been because they are truly, truly, truly working together. In the scripture today, Paul's words say the same thing. Paul writes, the body does not consist of one member, but many. Wouldn't it be silly to think of every body part as your nose? I mean, where does that get you? We can't eat if we're all noses. We can't run or walk. I can't even pick up this piece of paper with my nose. We'd have really good smell, but that's about it. So our bodies are so important because every body part works together. Every body part takes care of the other parts of the body because that is what God created our bodies to do. And that is what Paul is saying the church needs to do. Each of us are members of the body of Christ. 
each of us has a unique role to play. I might be better than preaching at preaching than you. I don't know, because I've not heard many of you. But I cannot sit where Linda sits and play that organ. And you wouldn't want me to. And if we're being honest, I really would prefer somebody else balance my check. Why do we have so many committees as Methodists? And we have a lot, don't we? It's because no one person can do all of this on their own. The many talents that come together in our leadership, that is what makes this church so successful. So don't envy each other. Don't judge each other. Rather, Paul asks us to lean into our own gifts and our own talents and work with each other. Bottom line, we need each other. Instead of digging in our heels and saying, my way is the only way, or my beliefs are the right beliefs, Paul is calling us to recognize that diversity helps us to keep asking, what is God's will for us? Rather than trapping ourselves in our same old assumptions. Paul makes it clear that his metaphor of the body does not include parts that are better than other parts. Each part cares for each other, and we are called to care for each other. We are called to love each other. We are called to reach out in kindness to each other, even if we disagree with each other. And ultimately, this is what happens in the movie. When the evil Ronan has the orb and it appears that he is going to destroy Xandar and the entire universe, Groot, which is that humanoid tree, who has only ever uttered the words, I am Groot. He grows branches that surround his fellow guardians and envelop them in a cocoon so that as Ronan's ship is pummeling and plummeting to, Earth, to Xandar and is going to crash, the members of the guardians of the galaxy will survive. And as that is happening, we see inside that cocoon, and Rocket the raccoon looks at Groot, and he has tears in his eyes. And he says, why are you doing this? You'll die. And Groot takes one of his branches and wipes those tears from under Rocket's eyes. And he says, we are Groot. We need each other. We are stronger together. We are stronger when we lift each other up. We are stronger when we use our gifts to help each other rather than just ourselves. If Groot had not cocooned everyone and given up his life, none of them would have survived. Not everyone can be everything to everybody. Henry Nouwen, one of my favorite theologians and authors, writes, Together, we are Christ's body, each of us with a part to play in the whole. So what's your role in the church? What's your role in the community? What is God calling you to do that will help others? Is it wearing a mask? Is it giving somebody a ride to the vaccine clinic that we're having on the 28th? Is it volunteering for that vaccine clinic? 
Is it getting a vaccine? Is it speaking kindness into this broken world instead of hate? Whatever it is that God is calling you to do, my prayer is that in the end, we can all say, not we are Groot, but rather we are North Little Rock First United Methodist Church. Amen. We are one body with many members. We all bring different gifts, and together all our gifts help us to proclaim Christ to our community and to the world. During this time of reflection, you are invited to prepare your offering. You may give online, or you may leave your offering in one of the wooden cross boxes at the exits of the worship space as you leave. Thank you for your generosity. Because of your gifts, we were able to furnish our new youth minister's office as she begins her ministry with us. Let us pray. Shepherd, show me how to go o'er the hillside steep how to gather, how to sow, how to feed thy sheep. I will listen for thy voice, lest my footsteps stray. I will follow and rejoice all the rugged way. Amen. Please join me as together we confess our sins to God and each other. O oh God, you call us to be your presence, your body in this world. But too often we get caught up in being a hand or a foot and lose sight of the mission you set before us. We fracture into pieces. We go our separate ways, forgetting that we need each other to be whole. Help us see with new eyes and hear with the ears of our heart the liberating spirit of the law that strengthens and revives and enables us to be and do all you call us to be and do. God, help us be faithful witnesses to your law of love and unity. Amen. The Spirit of God is upon us. God has called us to bring good news and liberation to the poor, to the marginalized, and to all who are in need anywhere. Through God, we can do all things. God's Spirit surrounds us with forgiveness and love. Praise be to God. Let us all stand as we sing together hymn number 593. Here I am, Lord, as we listen to the calling of God.
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall Thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to being with you again next week and welcoming Pastor Lynn back next week. So now, friends, as you lead, leave this place, hear your calling, hear your gifts, and where God is willing you to go to help others today, this week, and always, go in peace. Mm -hmm.